good. What's poppin'? What's up? You good. <laughs> what it do? <laughs> Come on, what's up? What we talking about? Hey, I see you got a fight date coming up. Yeah, um, July 31st at the uh, Prudential Center, man. Yeah, long awaited, man. I'm actually nervous and angry at the same time. Who who is you fighting? There's a kid named uh, a little side kid from uh, from Cali named uh, Ivan Delgado. I think he's like 16 and two or something like that. Tell you know, I, ain't watched, I ain't watched too much tape on him, but you know, I'm gonna just do what I do, watching tape or not, gonna get the same results. <laughs> you know what I mean, so. That's what they're so like. Is. How is camp coming along? Camp is very good. Camp is good, real, real good. We coming, you know, we coming coming up towards the end of camp, you know. So I've been in camp for a minute, you know. I, I knew I had a date in July. We just didn't know what what what, uh, what venue or what actual date it was. So you know, I was just preparing. For period. So you know, it's uh, it's actually July thirty first at the Prudential Center at the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. How many times you plan to fight this year? Say it again. How many times you plan to fight this yeah, year? I'm trying to fight every month as long as I'm healthy. Yeah. Hell every yeah. Every month as long as I'm healthy, man. Every day. No, no, <laughs> not every day. Like. <laughs> but no, every month as long as I'm healthy, man. You know, um, I wasn't fighting because you know, uh, 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 uh I was signing main events. I was signing main events. I just actually got out that contract earlier this year. You know, I had a lot of personal things going on. I was back in the gym, but then my uncle got sick and everything. So, you know, actually, I really wasn't going to box again at all. I wasn't going to box again at all. But my, my nephew, uh, my brother, uh, Mike Sharp, Mike Dargan. Has Shout out to my man, Mike. Shout out to my homie. Right. He, had, he got a son, and um, Mike Dargan Jr., and, you know, he played football. So he was he was playing football, and – um. He was real. He's real good at football. He wanted to, they uh they off. He had a lot of offers in co a few offers in college, but he was like, I don't want I don't want to play football. I want to box. So I'm like, all right. I said I, I think you should play football because they're gonna basically almost pay for your school and everything. But I'm like, whatever you want to do, I'll support you. I'm not gonna just say, oh, you don't want to play football and not support you in whatever you want to do. So he actually motivated me to actually want to fight again. Is so is he fighting too now? An like amateur? Oh uh, yeah, he's fighting amateur. He's uh he actually just started, so he fought twice in the last three weeks. He one and one. Okay. Um, so, but he he fight. Oh my goodness, he fights just like his father. <laughs> How old is he? He's twenty right now. He's oh, twenty. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, um, about this fight, you know, it was on July thirty first on the uh, Al Heyman card, PBC. You know, man, I'm just I just can't wait to get my feet wet again, man. I can't wait. To I got a a lot of people see me fight, but man, they they see me fight, but they didn't see me fight. Yeah, this right here, like my mental is a whole. Like I can tell you one thing right now, my uncle Najim. <clears throat> uh, when y'all see me fight, y'all gonna see what he's thinking. Y'all gonna see what he thinks. Y'all gonna see me fight it. Y'all gonna see him inside me because I personally think I'm a boxing genius. <laughs> Do how do it feel? How do it feel to adjust to a new trainer? Uh, my new trainer now is uh Hamza Muhammad, you know, and uh, you know, uh, Sharon, Sharon Baker, Coach Sharon, you know, that's been always been my assistant coach, you know, she's always on my team, so but uh, Hamza Muhammad is uh, the head trainer, and it's not like having a new trainer really because growing up in the amateur, I used to box Hamza and you know, growing up, he was always around. My uncle had him on his wing, you know. He was always around at tournaments and stuff like that. And my uncle all uh, passed down tournaments to him to take over. So he was always around. So, you know, he knows, like, he's one of the first, one of the best people, one of the few people in the city that actually knows me as far as in the ring and outside the ring. So, you know, I'm real comfortable. And plus, also, he trains uh, Stephen Fortin. And I've watched Stephen Fortin since he was in his early teens. And we've been around each other, so I feel uh, it, it, it's not – it was a transition, but it wasn't a difficult or hard transition at all. Well, we just – we just uh, – we're trying to get our little uh, boxing podcast off the ground, so we might need you to pull in somebody like Brian Ennis 
Steve, somebody, oh, Danny. Oh, no, 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 no doubt. You know, all them, all them guys, man, they're good friends of mine, man. You know, they're really, really good friends of mine, man. And, and, and they, they are hunted, too. They don't mind doing podcasts and stuff like that, depending on the timing and, you know, what they got going on at the time. Yeah. Right. So, but, yeah, a lot of them do, like, Jerron, oh, man, Jerron, and it's, oh, man, 147, yo, he's up. Big. He is, man. Like, I yeah. mean, when I say he, like, it's going to, like, make me sound old, but I remember going in the gym working out and him running around with a pamper on the gloves. On <laughs> yeah. And, like, I actually watched him grow from a baby to a man. And it's like, yeah. wow. <laughs> wow. Well, see, all y'all, all y'all come from boxing family, Jew, Sharp, Tiger, Rock, Bear. Yeah. Then you can pull to ride. Yo, they, they don't know like pull to ride. They're two of my favorite fighters. They're two of my favorite fighters. I always tell them that. They think I be bullshit, but I always tell them that, like, yo, y'all know y'all two of my favorite fighters, right? Because they do like, man, they can. They uh, this generation haven't seen them fight or anything, but they can fight. I when I when I being as though being as though I'm 48 years old and my uh. <laughs> my uh, my colleagues on the podcast, they 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 much younger than me. Yeah. So I try to I try to get them the old school. They got it, man. They got it. They got to do their research. They ain't doing their homework. It's yeah, great cause, it's great because I've been to about you because I'm an amateur right now, and all I always hear about is when they talk about amateurs, old am because you know Dorset is right. Who? Dorset. Yeah. Yeah, he took. That's my first time about through him, and okay. I always heard stories about you. Just yeah, he. Man, I was I, was, and, 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 and I, I wasn't as good as I wanted to be, but you know, I was good enough. Like the stuff I accomplished, I'm proud of. You know, but it's like on some real. If I, I really think if in my life, I've never, ever, ever gave myself. I never gave boxing 100 percent ever. It's a lot of people like that. I'm but never, you I never, I, I, like, sad to say, I had one foot in, one foot out, one foot in. But, one foot out. But, you know, but right now I feel as though I'm giving it my all. I don't do nothing. I work out, go in the house. I don't. I give you it know, my I all. Know, you know, I know you're telling the truth because you only got one loss, and your one loss came from a broken hand. Actually, two broken hands. I, I fractured <laughs> both of my hands in that fight. With, right. And I, and I fought with a stomach virus. So, so. And, if you gave us your all, you'll be on the top of your game. I know you'll yeah, get. Man, like, I know you're gonna get yeah. back. I know, know you're gonna. A lot of people ask me. A lot of people say, "Yo, we seen the fight that you lost. You know what happened? You didn't seem like yourself." I don't make no excuses. I don't tell what happened or anything because that's not gonna overturn anything. Not overturn the decision is not gonna do nothing. But actually, after I weighed in, I asked. I had some bad food from a restaurant. You know, I fought 135. I waited 135. I went into the fight at 136. All the food I was eating couldn't stay down. So the first two rounds, I felt fine. But I was just in survival mode after that. I was just in survival mode. So it is what it is. You know what I mean? I ain't tripping. I don't say nothing much about it. People always ask me all the time. And I say, you know what? I just lost. I just wet my neck. In boxing, you can't have a bad night. You can't. You can't. So, so with you coming back, is there anything specific you're trying to do? Like a bell, anybody oh, I for, I'm fight? definitely not doing it for my health. <laughs> no, but yeah, um, at one four, oh, I can still make one thirty five. Right. I, I moved up to one forty. I feel stronger at one forty though. You know, I feel strong. I, 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 I'll tell you right now. I left the gym today. After sparring, I was one forty two. You feel oh, me? See, right, and then I went. I went straight from the boxing gym to strength and conditioning workout. So right now I'm probably like I didn't even eat. I'm probably like one thirty nine, one forty maybe right now. If the money right, I would have a thirty if they stopped playing. It's a it's stat from one thirty to one forty. You got plenty. Yeah, there. but I I ain't messing with them youngest down here at one thirty. <laughs> Yo, I'm getting I'm getting out their way, man. <laughs> Is anybody specific you want to fight? Man, anybody. I have to be so I haven't been following boxing. A lot of anybody that knows me, they know I don't. I watch boxing, but I know you personally. You know. I, 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 if I know boxing, if you, I mean, if, if I watch boxing, I know you personally. I don't watch boxing. Okay. You know, but there's a lot of fighters, like champions right now, like they've never fought better opposition. Or if they did, it was once or twice. But I just see a couple fighters, they, 
you know, they don't, they haven't fought better opposition. They haven't fought with, they'll have to deal with adversity. You feel me? Yeah. And, and I'm a vet in the game, you know, and I, I tip my hat off to anybody that step, step in the ring. But on some real shit, they can't fuck with me. They definitely can't fuck with me. Swim without get wet. Swim without you see you see um back, uh, back there. That was a, that was the first there, thing I noticed. First thing I noticed when when you got on here. <laughs> yeah, swim without oh yeah um I got a new uh sponsor too a uh, uh, athletic sponsor man for his clothing curve fit they dope man go down South Street man. He got a good business going on, you know, and he's looking to uh he's looking to sponsor a lot of athletes, as far as any any sport, basketball, boxing, whatever, you know. Shout out to uh, Kurt Fitz, shout out to support my my guys. But yeah, again, man, like I'm just excited, man, to get my feet wet and everything, man. And it's probably gonna take me maybe about a round or two just to knock off the two years of uh, rust, maybe. Listen, do you uh? Do you still keep in contact with like Terrence Crawford and Gary Russell, Demetrius Andre, the people that you was uh, the right, with? Um, Terrence Crawford, man, Terrence, I talk, I call, I call Terrence anytime, any day, Facetime, anytime. Yeah, of course. Boo boo. Oh man, my bad. I, I, I'm supposed to send him a picture of my own glue, and I forgot. But uh, Boo Boo Andre, yes, of course. Gary Russell, we had a little situation, but I like Gary. That's my homie, man. Like. I don't, like, he, that's my guy. I ain't got no problem with Gary. Like, he, you know what I mean? Like, he say he don't fuck with me and all that, but listen, that's that's his personal problem. I don't got nothing, nothing with him. Bro, he had a situation where he was in camp when him and Terrence Crawford got into it. I remember that. You know, and what happened was Gary actually uh, 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 got the story mixed up. So he basically, like, he didn't get the story mixed up. What he told was true, that he stole off for a chance because he did. That's what he stole was true. What he told was true. It's just that what he did, what he was, was mistaken about was it was a totally different camp. He said it was the Olympic camp when it was the Pan Am camp because I didn't go to the Olympic camp. I turned pro. So he was like, ah, oh, he just came at me and just said, oh, you, I don't go back and forth on the internet. If I run into you, I run into you. You feel me? I wasn't going to, I wasn't going, I didn't want you to, I didn't even want you to explain that. I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah, I won't go ask you that. You, know, you already know, you already know. <laughs> you already know, like, I don't, I don't get into that, you know what I mean? So, I, I run, when I run into you, I run into you. I was running, take it however you want to take it. Hey, when, um, when you say you've been out for two years, how long did it take you to get back in fight shape? Not in fight shape, but to get back to where you wanted to be, to know you want to fight again. Actually, I, man, my nephew was my nephew was training, and then one day I just woke up and felt like mentally I was 13 years old again. Mentally, I had the passion to do it again. I was 13 years. Old. I was like, dang. I woke up because at, a, at a, it was to a point where the, I didn't want to box at all. Because to me, I'm used to it. Went to me, it went from a privilege to an obligation. Because that's all I did all my life. You feel me? But I always had Tiger Rock and my brother around. Bear, I always had them around. So even days that I didn't feel like going to the gym, they pushed me. Come on, come on, come on. Now it was like, I felt, and this is the point, I felt alone in the game. So it was like, if I didn't feel like going to the gym, I just didn't go. If I was in the gym hitting the bag and I was getting tired, they would push me. If I get tired, I just stopped. That's who would have train with you. Yeah, I needed that. Motivation. I needed that extra push. That extra push in the gym. I have the mental. I had the mental motivation, but that actual push in the gym. If I didn't have the actual push in the gym, like, what the? Like, what am I doing? But then, like I said, my nephew. My nephew there with me every day, all day, every day. You know, he's like. It's almost like I grew up with my brother twice. I grew up as a younger brother. Now I'm growing up with my brother as an older brother. Cause he does everything just like his father. Everything. How? All right, let's go. Over, I want to turn back the hands of time for a minute. How did you? Uh, how did you? Um, remember you was in camp with Shane Mosley. That he was training for the Floyd fight. Yeah. How did that go? How, what was that like? Because no, I, I remember you saying it was, it was me, 
uh, my cousin Rock. Actually, Jamal Charlo was in that camp. Ooh. You know, Jamal you know, is a male. When we, yeah, when we see a lot of people have camps differently. I, I have, like, when I spar or when I box, we spar. You know, my uncle was training Shane. So we in there, you know, I'm emulating the things that Floyd do. You know, we're not in there just trying to blast each other out. You know, it's strategy. Camp is about strategizing. A lot of guys use camp to lose weight. If you use a camp to lose weight, you don't got time to strategize. Now when you get in a fight, if, if you need to adjust something, you can't do it because your whole camp was based on losing weight. Yeah, that's fair. You feel me? So in that, in, in, um, training with Shane for that fight in that camp, when it was it was a wonderful experience. Wonderful experience. We had a lot of guys in there. Lucas Matisse was there. Mm. Uh, and that was back when he was Yeah, it was a guy that, uh, exactly. Oh, man, let me tell you a story about we was in there boxing Lucas, right? So my brother was there, too. So guy was, it was a guy named Sharif Bolger at, at 135. I don't know what he's doing right now. He fought at 135. So I was up there, and I was fighting 35. Everybody was boxing Lucas, but Lucas was like, doing his thing. He's boxing Shane, but Shane had the lightweight open up because Lucas like was a problem. So one day he swore one of the guys, right? And when he swore, actually my brother went up there. My brother went up there. He just went up there just to be with me. My brother ain't boxing like two years. He was just up there being with me. So my uncle put him in the ring, was like, go ahead and give him a couple rounds. So after like the first or second round, my brother was like, man, listen, I'm tired or whatever. <laughs> so he like, so Lucas like, oh, that's it, that's it. I'm like, that's it. He talking crazy. So Shane had a bodyguard named Ness. So Ness like, dynamite box, dynamite boxing. So I'm like, I wasn't supposed to box that day. So I'm like, hey, can we get a couple rounds? Can we go? I'm like, all right, come on, we get a couple rounds. Come on. Man, I got in there. I'm like, okay. Now, my coach like, yo. What you do is, like, you get in there, he's heavy-handed. So a lot of them guys is letting them hit on his arms, you know, and he get momentum from that. He said, make him miss completely. So my reflexes are really good. So he said, make him miss completely. We boxing, you know, I went on the inside just to feel the heaviness on his hands. <laughs> I'm like, okay, he's strong, but I can handle him. So we on the inside, boop, boop, boxing, boop, boop. So... I'm on the ropes just catching shots, catching shots. So then he threw a hook, a right hook or something. No, a left hook. And I dipped under and he did with an uppercut to the body. And I heard him go, hmm. So then I grabbed him and put him on the rope. And it was all over. It was all she wrote. So then we boxed that day and a couple more days. And there was, they didn't want to box no more. But that, camp, but that was a legendary camp, man. That was a legendary camp. Must be something about y'all Philly boys at home, because remember what Danny did to him. Facts. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I, when I was, in, I was in camp with Canelo, and at the time I was in camp with Canelo, I was boxing Canelo. To me, Danny was physically stronger than Canelo at the time. You feel me? I was like, okay, Canelo can punch, but I don't know if he was pulling or nothing, but I, I doubt it because when I was boxing Canelo, he. One of the guys had to leave because he broke his ribs. One of the, he broke the one guy's elbow. And they was like, they actually called me for the beginning of the camp. And they was like, uh, we have a guy named Carl Dargan. Uh, 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 he fights 135. They was like, no, he's too small. He's too small. But uh, they was like, no, he's not the average 135. Was this for the Mayweather fight? Facts. I remember because I remember. Called, everybody called me to fight when they fight Mayweather. They call me. I remember when um I remember that fight before the fight came out and they were saying Canelo was breaking people's ribs. He was, and they was fucking he was fucking nigga up. So I flew out there, they like, man, we need you out here. He don't got nobody to box. I'm like, all right, cool. I flew out there, it's in Big Bear. I flew out to LAX. So it was an hour from LAX to drive the Big Bear. My plan landed landed probably about one, one thirty. They start sparring at two thirty. I get up there around like two forty five. They said they like, are no, you going to uh, spar next time? I said no. We came up here to box. We going to suit it up today. Let's suit up. So they like, uh, how many can you give? I'm like, mm, I can give you probably about. Let's do. I said give me two or three. Matter of fact, do four. Let's let's see how I feel. So like, all right, I get in the ring. So Jack Mosley was working my corner. So I'm boxing, boxing. It was it was cool. You know, just I mean, getting the rhythm and everything. And I was like, okay, I, I, I seen what it, like again with Luke the same way with Lucas. You can't let Canelo hit you. You gotta make him miss completely. Just because you're blocking it, your arm is still getting damaged. Your body that's, getting damaged. That's why I stay completely away from. Him. Yeah, yeah. Right. 
That's one thing I like about uh, another thing that I like about Tevin Farmer. When he make you miss, he don't just catch and catch and catch. He make you miss completely. Yeah. You know he's preser that that preserves your body because your body. It takes a lot of air out of body like a carton of milk. Your body is expiration date. Your body can take but so much damage. You feel Average. me? Like, yeah. So it was a time that I was camp with Canelo. I was just the only person there. The only person there. They were like, "Hey, can you go to Vegas with us?" I'm like. Yeah, I can go to Vegas with us. I can go to Vegas with y'all. Um, I need some tickets to the fight, though. Because <laughs> they were, they were going to send me home. I'm like, no, I need some tickets to the fight. And y'all got to pay me a couple extra dollars. And y'all got to pay for I want to stay at the MGM event. Y'all got to pay for all my shit. So what y'all want what, to That's yeah, what, yeah. that's something like, that's something like I always respect about you. Like, being from the hood. You ain't had no problem with getting on the plane, going out there, rumbling them guys. Facts. And I expected you to, I expected you to like, I still expect you to go far. Like, I got high expectations for you. You my OG, you know I'm going to always keep it real. You can't live your expectations through me. Right. But I understand your drift and I understand you and I feel you. You feel me? And, and and one thing for sure, two things are certain. It ain't nothing but up from here. I know. I listen. I followed your career. You know, I'm there for you. Man, you watch me I, grow up. Come on. I watch. Man. So we going. I know what you could do. You watch I me know. Grow up. You listen. You watch me grow up from kid to the street to everything. You watch me. So you I, know a I, lot I, of I, you I, know I, more than most people in my family know about me. I want you to. I want you to go out there and get a belt. Oh, of course. I do oh, too. Girl, I'm getting, I'm, I want all the belts. I do too. All the belts. So, I want to know. I want to know. See, personally, right? Mm -hmm. If I watch you, and I watch Josh Taylor at one forty, I beat Josh Taylor. I can guarantee up. you that you come on with the belt. I beat Josh Taylor the fuck up. I guarantee you that you'll come on with the belt. I put my, I put my, I put my life on it that you'll come on with all the belts against Josh Taylor. Hey, Corey Robinson, what's up? That's my guy right there, Corey Robinson. Y'all see Corey? Show him some love, man. That's, that's, Stop, Ray, Charles that's Ray Charles' son. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's the like, one he played for. Um, oh, no, no, no. That's but yeah, uh, Johnny, I see you, Johnny. One forty about to be wide open. Yeah, one forty about to be wide open. Man, but listen. Yeah, um, shout out to Johnny Four Throttle. Yeah, that's my young boy. I see you. I see you. That's my, that's my little bro right there. Bro. Johnny Four Throttle. That's my little bro right there. Hey, Corey, I'm coming out in a couple of weeks after the fight. Oh, yeah, you're going to be out there. Yeah, Corey, I'm coming out in a couple of weeks after the fight. But yeah, man, um, I'm just, overall, man, I'm just excited. And I'm back watching boxing again. Because I don't, I don't, I wasn't following boxing at all. I just wanted, I wasn't into it at all anymore. I felt out of love. I felt out of love. I loved it, but I felt out of love. Yeah, I feel I mean, that. Yeah, I ain't even like I, I go to box fights here and there. A lot of a lot of people say, You watching the fight? I'm like, watching the fight tonight? Who fighting? Oh man, you ain't watching the fight? Uh this person fight. I'm like, oh I ain't no. <laughs> what you what you watching boxing again? Is there any fights you looking forward to? Uh there's one fighter that I'm actually looking forward to doing damage coming up. So who's like, that? Yo, Keyshawn Davis. Hey, he from my city, North. Listen, listen, I was in Colorado. I was boxing him. And when I boxed him, the last person I boxed that, that I felt though had potential like him and had time like him, it was like just on beast mode like him was Terrence Crawford. He about to win. He about to win. Davis. Rode up there in Tokyo. Yo, this dude, Keyshawn, yo, who? And when I boxed him, it was like, this is my first time sparring in probably about eight, nine months. So I go in there, I'm like, ooh, I'm in there like doing my little thing. So, you know, he caught me the jab, boo boo, caught me a couple shots. And I was like, oh, I got to keep my hands up the whole time boxing him. <laughs> and it's keep my hands up. Like he made me like really dig down. Like, you know I mean? even though we wasn't sparring to like kill each other, but I still had to dig down and just get it. You feel me? And like he, Yo, he's a beast. It's crazy because I, I started boxing 
when I was 16, and that's all I used to hear about in the gym. I was like, yeah, you got to see about Keyshawn. And I remember I used to think, like, who is this? Then I finally seen him fight, and I was like, yeah, Yo, he, I see what y'all talking He about. was the beginning of me watching boxing again because I was on Instagram. I, and when I go on Instagram, I go on my Explore page, and I just be watching, and I was like, damn, who the fuck is this young boy? And he was just getting busy. And he got a personality, too, so that's going to be yeah, big. Yeah, he was getting and, Yo. His demeanor is the best. Like his demeanor is, is unmatched, man. Like he, like man, like he he respects you, but he also knows what he can do to you. Yeah. You feel me? That's how I be. A lot of people don't respect the game. He respect the game because when I say a lot of people don't respect the game, because just because your opponent, your opponent, you think you can beat your opponent, you know you can beat your opponent, don't mean you don't mean you, you're not supposed to respect him. You feel me? Yeah, a, a person can get in the ring. He could be zero and sixty-five. I'm going to respect him because he stepped in his ring, and, and every time you step in that ring, you risking your life. I know people that died in the ring. I know people that's brain dead from being in the ring. You feel me? And yeah, it's you, like you stepping in the ring and you putting your oh, your, so basically you putting yourself in harm's danger, in harm's in harm's way. You putting yourself in harm's way. Like, I respect that. Hey, you that's should, I see um, yeah, I see the comments, Javon. That's my boy. He on to come up too. Who that? Javon Woodward, he on the come up. That he got. Wood, I no. never hear about him. Okay, I see him. Javon Wood. Okay, Javon. Oh, where he from? Don't even get me lying to you. No, if you watch, he's he gonna comment. He's pro. Yeah, he is. Okay, I'm gonna check him out. I'm gonna check you out. I'm gonna check you out, young. Send me a D. I'm gonna check you out. I see him oh, wow. tank in person. You seen uh, Keyshawn Spark Tank? Yeah, he did. Yo, like, yo. He's, man, he spoke him, I think, the end of, like, he he from Atlanta. November last year. Okay, yeah, Keyshawn, like, he's a, like, he a beast, man. Like, he a beast. I like him. I like him. Them guys better watch out for that dude, man. And his brothers, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually I spar I actually I spar him and I think the older I spar the older brother too. Kill. How about they they South Park, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're good fighters. Very they both, good fighters. They had they, 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 they kept me on my they man kept me on my P's and Q's the whole time. They both just fought on um Canelo car when he fought uh Billy Joe Saunders in the Cowboy Stadium. Facts, facts. Yeah, 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 yeah. I seen that, I seen that. I seen that. But like I said, he was the beginning of me watching boxing, watching boxing period because I started, I stopped watching amateur boxing. Then when I seen him, I'm like, I start watching amateur, and I'm like, okay, now they, I didn't even know they had the head gears off. Yeah, and the um, at the elite level, yeah. Yeah, I knew they had the head gears off when they years ago when they did the uh, they had the team, the different team, the the different teams like the LA Matadors and all that back then, the uh, US, the NBC boxing, whatever. The, I forgot. What yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But I didn't know they was actually like in tournaments taking a head gear. So, hey Johnny, I never, I never doubted that Johnny. Yeah, WSB, and they said, "Yo, I like Earl, man." And then with the mix with the all them dudes at one forty seven. But he's saying that he used to tell me Jerron then it should beat Earl up. I never, I never, I never man, disputed. Listen, that. I like that fight. I ain't gonna hold you. I like that fight. I never disputed it though. I never, you know, I don't got no answer. I, like I did. I like that fight. I love that fight. That's a good you must fight. Got, like you got me saying that. You must have been wired. Ah, <laughs> he was wired. Yeah, because I don't remember that one. Yeah, but yeah, man, like, I'm just really excited, man. I can't wait, man. I really, really, really can't wait. I got um oh I got uh Wahi Raheem that's my guy my childhood friend Wahi you know he's one of my coaches right now one of my assistant coaches too Wahi that's my guy he uh the brother Zaire Raheem that was on the Olympic team with Floyd yeah look I, um I have run-ins with them Zaire Raheem Terrence uh Carthren. Terrence Carthen yeah he that was my David Reed that was my era facts David Reed. Yo, they had three guys, that was two guys from Philly, but, but three guys trained out of Philly on this Olympic team. That was that was crazy. And Terrence Crawford, I actually thought his fight in the Olympics, the semifinals, he actually, I thought he actually, they, they took that fight from him and Floyd. Right. Yeah, definitely. Thought, and a lot of people don't know. I really, 
you know, and you know why I think they they may have took that fight from him because of Joe Frazier. Because you know that was the Olympics when Joe Frazier said, "Why would y'all give Muhammad Ali the torch?" And he was shaking. He was like, "I did that to Ali." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the next day, Terrence Ford, who beat the crap out of dude, and he didn't get the decision. And you, and you, and you asked for an Olympics, like what? Right. Yeah, Lord Sheen, yeah. Rasheem Jefferson. Yeah, Rasheem Jefferson. That's my cousin, Lord Sheen. That's like my nephew. Yeah, I follow um Rasheem. I be seeing yeah. him too. Rasheem Jefferson. That's that's like my brother and his son. That's like like my nephew. I remember he. We in the, hey, like, We were kids sleeping in the same room. You know, I was like we used to party all the time. Hey, Real quick, the same kid. bring in Johnny Four Throttle. Huh? I told Seth to bring in Johnny real quick. Johnny, his name Four Throttle. Yeah, Four Throttle. Johnny, but yeah, I'm really got the call. I'm like, dude, my man, I got a child on the way. What's up, Yo. little bro? Shit, cool, What's cool. Up? I'm in Vegas right now. Got hop oh, on I was, night I, out. I was gonna come out there like a little while ago, man. Cause you know Shane, Shane, Shane Jr. just bought a crib out there. He's like, you might, you gotta check my crib out. I mean, I was supposed to come out there. When I come out there, I'm gonna holler at you. For sure, for sure. You know, I'll be out. I'll probably be in Philly like once a week, bro. I'll be out, bro. You know how Philly is right now. I should be drunk. I'll be in the house. <laughs> hey, Johnny, here, you got, Johnny, you, you got know. any questions? You got anything you want to say? It's a boxing. I'm just saying Philly, you know, Philly lit right now with up and coming. You got Lil Sheen, Rashin. It's, it's a lot of it's a lot of up and coming. You know, Scooter yeah. doing this thing. Um, he got robbed in Olympic trials too, Rashin. He for uh yeah. he, he lost to uh, uh Bruce Carrington, right? I didn't see that fight. I seen I don't know if it was a fight before or after Bruce. Because you know, Olympic trials double elimination. I know when he like, I like I said, when I was in Colorado, when I was sparring Keyshawn, he was sparring Bruce Carrington too, and like it looked like they both had something to get off their chest with each other. <laughs> they had fought before the trials. Um, oh right, she beat him to get into the trials. But since both of them was the um made it to the championship round, they both got accepted in, and they carried okay. The trials. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah I, don't know. I think Keyshawn should that. medal. But who yeah, else? No are, doubt. Uh, That's no doubt. It's, it's it's only guy that that the only the only the guy that really that really got his number is the guy from Cuba. Andy Cruz. Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing, just like Pacquiao and Marquez was fighting, as more and more time like there's the, um, him so many times, Keyshawn should have his number. And Keyshawn the, should, I think Keyshawn should wipe him out. They said the one kid used to give him issues too, but that was in the use though. Like he beat Keyshawn both times, three yeah. times, three and oh against Keyshawn the um oh, you kid about turned, Mark Castro. Yeah, but they, man, they put him in the ring now. I like no disrespect to Mark. I don't think like I don't Keyshawn Mintz was just on a whole nother level. Yeah, I, I haven't seen him and when I seen the dude Mark Castro fight, I wasn't that impressed. Him and Andy Cruz fought three times. I don't even think Andy Cruz won all three of them. I think it was one that he did he really won for sure, but the other two, it could have won both ways. I don't remember which one. It was one that I thought he definitely won. What about the kid? Um what's his name? Tiger? Tiger Jack? Yeah, I like him too. Oh yeah. Young, yo, man, I, young and nice. I forgot about he's from uh Toledo, I think. Strong too. Yeah, Ohio. He a beast. He think he, I think he fight uh Junior Middle, right? Fifty two. Yeah, he's like fifty two. He said, Ask D Mike what happened with the buddy Gary. I think you <laughs> you told what happened too many times. But yeah. I, you remember we've been I've been hearing about that story since like back in like oh and I was like, yo, like you know me, I don't I don't get in it with my with people on box. Nobody never mentioned me and none of that because I don't get into it. Because at the yeah. end of the day, like I grew up in the streets, I ain't with the talk. And if I see you, I see you, I'm gonna pull up on you. I heard about that story in the gym. But at the end of the yeah. day, it, it happened. I mean, like I said again, Gary wasn't lying about what happened. He did still off on on uh, Terrence Crawford, and they broke after he stole off on him. Boom. You know, they it was the old commotion. They broke it up. They wasn't. They wouldn't. They wasn't letting them scrap. But I was on the other side of the ring, so I didn't really see. I just seen the commotion of them breaking up. I'm like, yo, what happened? It was like, yo, uh, Gary and uh, and Bud was uh was going back and forth, and Gary stole off on you or whatever. You know what I mean, and the only I guess Gary had an issue with me because I said it was the Pan Am camp, and it, and he said it was the Olympic camp. I said no, it was the Pan Am camp. So why is that? Why is that something to be? 
Why yeah, is that? I, I have no idea. I, don't, I, I, guess, I don't know. I don't know. I guess he probably thought I was taking Bud's side. But one thing about me, I don't take nobody's side. I speak my truth. Because at the end of the day, I don't give a fuck what nobody think about me, man. I speak my truth. That's, so why, motherfuckers, that's why motherfuckers fuck with me. I keep it 100. I don't bite my tongue. Ain't nobody ever disrespect me in boxing. And, 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 you know what I mean? If, and if they did, ask them, did I pull up? I want to know, right? This is Dom, what I he was like, I don't fuck, Dom, I don't fuck with you, Slim. <laughs> what I want to know. And the crazy thing about it is, like, I watch Gary go like like when we grew up in the, in amateurs like I watched Gary I, he had a brother named Dave Andre and I used to fight all the time. His brother named Dave Andre. Is that the one like that got know. killed? Beef, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and like when we go to tournaments, we they stayed in our room. We stayed in their room. Like we was like this. I don't know. What, I don't know. Maybe he was just angry or something. But listen, you get mad at me because I said it was the Pan Am camp because I didn't go to the Olympic camp. I went. I turned pro after I won a pair of names. So how was the Olympic camp? And Bud was an Olympic team. So why was Bud was the end of the Olympic camp? They actually kicked Bud off the Pan Am team. He was on the team. They, Bud was a high head. They kicked him off the team. So the one thirty two we had was uh, who was the one thirty two? I forgot the one thirty two we had because they kicked Bud off the team because I think it was Danny, right? I think no, Danny was sitting. Uh, uh, Danny wasn't on the Pan Am team. Danny, Danny wasn't on the Pan Am team. They kicked Bud off the team because we was in Venezuela at the Pan Am qualifier, and he was fighting in the stands, fighting a dude from Puerto Rico. <laughs> they kicked him off the team. You know what I mean? But, yeah, like, there wasn't an Olympic camp. I just said it was an Olympic camp, but feel how you feel. I don't go back and forth. I don't talk behind nobody. I won't say nothing to my – behind nobody back, but I won't say it to their face. Hey, I got a question. Yes, be Danny. Hello. Diaz, Diaz, who is Diaz? I don't remember Diaz. No, he's talking about the brothers. I think you, they robbed you and Danny on them, on the trials. Diaz, that who one, is Diaz? That one brother. He's talking about on the Olympic trial. I ain't find nobody named Diaz in the Olympic trial. But he, he's getting the name confused. It's that brother. They brothers. They signed with Goosen, but he took an L, like, early. Oh, I don't know. I, see, did. that's why I said, I don't be knowing box. You got to... You, just saw yeah, you know the dude. What's the brother they rocked Danny in the finals in the 08? I didn't see it. I didn't go to the trials. You did? Oh, shit. I told you I turned Sam, pro. Sam got I a question. Pan Am. I won the Pan Ams in August of 07. I turned pro. Yeah, Sam got rock. a question for one of y'all. Yeah, when you, when you spot Canelo, we're getting ready for Mayweather. So when you spot him back in there, are you surprised to see where he at now? Or did you... No, nah, hell no. Go back and look at the fight with him and Floyd. I bet you Floyd oh, yeah. wasn't catching him with none of the shit he used to catch everybody else with. I watched it. Floyd came out with try to catch him with a check hook. He couldn't catch him with it. You know, like, my, my work is solidified, man. Like, this shit is real, man. This time for me to just beat these dudes the fuck up. For real, for real. I ain't gonna hold you. I've been humble all my career. Motherfucker, no, I don't talk shit, but Maybe I should talk shit because talking shit gets you places. <laughs> how, how, how you feel? How you feel about the whole Canelo? How he did boo boo at the press conference? Uh, you gotta re you gotta re re, re replay it for me. What happened again? He, I watched it a, a little bit of it. I know oh, you remember boo boo. Boo boo. Uh -huh. He was kind of polite with it, like you know, you know how boo boo trying to be nice, like I'm a fan. And Canelo's like, yeah, I know this and that. No, fuck off, this and that. Tell him like, oh. Go the fuck off, this and that. But, you know, the security wouldn't let Boo Boo talk. So, you know, I kind of got irritated because I kind of felt like it was a little racism part of it. Well, I wouldn't That's... say that. I wouldn't say racism part. You got to understand. After the fight, it's his time. Let the man talk. This is not your... Okay, we know you want to fight. Boo Boo, my man. You, we know you want to yeah. fight. But it's his time. And sometimes, like, one thing I know about Boo Boo, Boo, Boo is outspoken. Boo Boo gonna say what the fuck you want to say. Yeah. Well, he had so, that same problem. He, Boo Boo did the same thing against Charlo. After Charlo lost, after Charlo won, Boo Boo was like, "No disrespect, yeah, Charlo." Boo -Boo, no, I, I was there. I was actually there Boo -Boo for that. Boo Boo that. Listen, if he try to go through contracts or go through managers to get the fight, he can't get it. You gotta, man, you gotta get it by any means. Yeah, 
Yeah, that no, I'm just saying a lot of fighters look at that as disrespect. Like, this is my time. I won my fight. Let me speak. I ain't, you know, this ain't about you. And Boo Boo did that twice. Listen, so I listen, I'm, not mad, I'm not mad at what Boo Boo did, and I'm not mad at what Charlo and uh, Canelo did. Cause at yeah, the that's day, what I'm look at look at Boo Boo point of view. I'm trying to get these fights. I'm fighting these guys. Right. They keep saying I'm like fighting. I'm fighting these guys because I have to fight these guys. I'm these guys not fighting me. Right. My my so old, my only thing Canelo is like, view, and Canelo point of view is like, I just got out the ring. You know, my adrenaline pumping. It's my time. Okay, I'm in the middle of the interview. Okay, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's, hey, yo, Canelo, man, come on, you interrupted me. Like, come on, get the fuck out of here. Like, you interrupted me. The only, right. only thing I didn't like about that, I just, Canelo just looked like a hypocrite because everything he said about Boo Boo could have fit for a few names he fought. And when Canelo fought Laura, Laura did the same thing, um, interrupted his press conference, and he ended up getting the Canelo fight. So I right, see but one thing about Boo Boo, I think Boo Boo be getting, un getting under motherfucker's skin. He does. <laughs> Definitely. He, and he probably read his shirt. Um, well, me personally, Canelo and Billy Joe scared him. I, yeah, boo boo, boo boo. Yeah, I know boo boo, boo boo gets on it. I'm sitting here talking. You know, I forgot to make. I, man, I'm eating carbs. A lot of people can't eat carbs, man. Why they training, man? They gotta cut that weight. Them dudes. Be I'm a a a d Mike Johnny Seb. Y'all know I'm one of the ones. Well, well, Seb know that I'm one of the ones. I'm not a boo boo believer. You not a boo boo believer? <laughs> nah. -uh. You must ain't do your homework. <laughs> yeah, that motherfucker could box his ass off. All right, listen, I'm gonna tell yeah. you one thing. Listen, I'm gonna tell you one thing, right? Um the first time I ever met Boo Boo, I was at the US Nationals, right? I think I had just beat Hank Lundy, right? I beat Hank Lundy, and then Austin Trout was my homie. So I'm I'm look Austin Trout, so I'm like, so. I'm like, okay, Austin about to rumble. I'm going in. So Austin rumble. I'm like, who the fuck is this dude putting that shit on Austin Trout with Boo Boo? I'm like, yo, young boy, nice. <laughs> young boy, nice. But when I turned pro, I didn't, I wasn't, being as though I was winning all the tournaments, I had an at-large bid. So I didn't have to fight through the locals, through the regionals, and none of that. I went straight to the nationals. You feel me? So a lot of guys, I didn't, like, Charlo and them, I've, I've knew them in the amateurs, but I wasn't around when they was really fighting in the amateurs really like that. So when, and a lot of people was telling me like, yo, uh, and even in, in the amateurs, you know, the Charlo, they were scared of Boo Boo. And I was like, I mean, I know the Charlos. I don't even, I'm like, them dudes ain't in the amateurs. I'm like, them dudes solid dudes. To me, like, personally, because they, they solid dudes. I know them personally. Like, they solid dudes. I don't see them being scared. So they beef go way back to, since the amateurs? Amateurs. Facts. Damn. Facts. Super facts. No, I would tell you a story, right? They know I they know I was real close to Boo Boo, right? So uh -huh. after the Conor McGregor um Floyd fight, the next day Jellyon Love has like a um celebrity basketball game or whatever. You said so I'm Jillian there with Love? A, yeah, I'm there with a okay, girl. Okay. <laughs> I'm there with a girl. It's just Jamel and Jamal, you could tell they acted different. Jamel came up. Sorry, y'all. Like, hey, uh, my bad. I'm making dinner real quick. He was like, he was like, you boo boo man, right? I was like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> He's like, fuck boo boo. I was like, bro, get y'all money. No, fuck him. You don't deserve shit. Then Jamal he even said, went him crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jamel okay. definitely had to the hot like, too. Like on some real shit, a lot of fighters don't be a lot of fighters don't be keeping it real, you know. Like they say, oh, this guy, who the hell is that guy? Y'all know who these people be. That's like, why a lot of people say, oh, they never, they be know who people be. And like, I don't know if it's just because they don't kind of, they're not trying to give them no publicity or whatever, but man, that shit is loaded. That's like, why so many people. That, that 160, 154 is loaded. And Danny going up to 154. When you when you just said so, um, they try to act like they don't know people. Some people just mad at Keith Thurman because he tried to act like he didn't know who Books was in an hey, interview about let, a week or two ago. Let me tell y'all. <laughs> let me tell y'all a situation where I ran into Devin Haney in Vegas. So, I'm in Vegas. Let me see what fight is this. Is Sean Porter, Sean Porter, Adrian Broner. Right? In Vegas, I'm with my I'm 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 with my my ex-wife or whatever, right? So, I think this was around the time where uh, 
I don't know if y'all remember Devin Haney was going around running, running up on boxes, putting on his blog or whatever, whatever he was doing. I remember that. So I remember that. My wife, so I'm staying in the MGM. So he, him and his pop walk up like, "Yo, you, uh, you box right?" I look at him like, look at his pop. He like, "Yo, uh, your name, uh, Carl Doug, right?" I'm like, I said, "Listen." This ain't even type of ball game. Y'all know, y'all know who I am. All that camp shit, we ain't even doing that. So what, what's up? Huh? You feel me? They need people. Like I'm like, yo, like what's up? I went on. I ain't on that shit. Like nigga, you you could pad them cameras out if you want. I'ma steal both of y'all. <laughs> Post is one. You know what I mean, like for real, like that's the. I ain't gonna say I was going to like, but that's that's the that's the type of time I be on. Yeah. You feel me? You already know, like I'm like, no, we ain't, we ain't doing that. We ain't cloud chasing over here. Oh no, 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 no. I was just saying, yeah, because um, yo, know, I was supposed to be fighting this person. I seen you fought them before, or whatever. I was like, well, all right, My, you know what I mean, just keep it, keep it cute. Like keep it cute, man. Like for real, man. Like, cause he was running down on boxing. For real. They said Devin Haney and Shakur almost threw hands. Really? That shit in Madison Square Garden. Yup. Wow. They said Bud and it was when yo. I broke it up. I'm going to tell you one thing. The only person that I thought that was going to beat Le Machico was Devin Haney. I know a couple people felt that way. I felt that way. I swear I felt that way. And Telefema, I was like, I watched him fight. I'm like, because I'm looking at my point of view. I'm like, okay, he could punch, but he don't show me nothing special. But then when he showed me his, I got to I gotta see his, I got to see his next fight because Whoever trained, like whoever came up with the strategy, that shit was awesome. Is that <laughs> like, like, I yeah, like he won me? Telefimo won me over with that. To be yeah, honest, I, I really didn't I think really, I lost money in that Loma fight. To be honest with you, you I, was, think, I was so, really so, in that top on Devin Haney till his last fight. He showed me more. He showed me he could fight I, in the inside. Like I, I don't know why, but I, I always I ain't gonna hold you. Like whether I fuck with him or not, whether he do nuts or not, I was a fan. I was I was a Devin Haney fan. I'm not. I am a Devin Haney fan. When I dudes, respect the game. Just because motherfuckers in my weight don't mean I don't like him. Just like Hank Lundy. I'm a Hank Lundy fan. Listen, he thinks he's the best in the universe, <laughs> even though he's not. I. You got to have the mentality. Me, with me, right? I kind of think that on our show, like, we, we we had this show going on for about two or three months. Uh -huh. And I kind of, th you know, so everybody had their opinion. And you can read the comments and you might get a little... Cussed out from the comments and all that, <laughs> but you know when I say when I when I say little things like I don't think that I don't think that Devin Haney Lenares fight I don't think that Lenares gave the fight at all. I yeah, think that Lenares fight. Lenares. Yo, I think that's me with Lenares. I ain't gonna hold you because Lenares that's a, he a solid fighter. I right. think um. Devin Haney actually impressed me more. I think, yeah, Lenars is kind of older on his downhill. You yeah, see, you see that he didn't like right. as yeah. much. But Devin right. Haney showed me that he could fight in the inside. That was always my problem with Devin Haney. Well, yeah, as a pro, you got to be good to fight in the inside. Yeah, but like I said, though, he didn't get Lenares. He didn't get the Lenares we know as Lenares. Yeah, but he got, like seven years got, ago, been probably did two, different problems. Right. Even, none of them, they, they didn't get the Lenares that fought DeMarco. Right, right. Because you know, back back in the day, uh, um, Bob Aram threw Lenares out of Pacquiao training camp because he was busting. He was. I said back in the day, Bob Aram threw Lenares out of Pacquiao training camp because he was doing Pacquiao dirty. I heard, no, I heard there was boxing. There was like a guy Lenares was giving Pacquiao some work. Yeah. yeah, I heard back in the day in the 2012 team, I heard Lenares went up, went, went up to the Olympic camp, put hands on Jamel and Jojo Diaz. And yeah, um, that's true. He, was, he was putting hands on um, Jamel Heron, Jojo Diaz, and um, what's his name? Lenares got a 40. Lenares got a hey, I'll tell you one thing. Jamel Heron won me over with that Carl Frampton fight because I watched him, and I was like, dang, he's a good solid fighter, but he didn't impress me, but – I like I like I in, in his mentality, like him as a person is like dope. Yeah, I like I like I like him. He impressed me with the Carl Frampton fight too. It was his he fight with um, I don't know how to pronounce it. Ido, Ido. That was a fight. No, he about the most likely fight Shakur next. Yeah. Who that? Jamel. Jamel. They about is, to is force that, that, is that, is that a done deal? It's a heavy talk. They talks. about to force it. 
That's a done deal? It's a heavy toss. Shell Shakur's it's basically for October. I'm hearing it's basically about to be a damn near done deal. Wow. I like that. Man, one thing about uh I can say about uh Shakur. That dude, man, I I ain't gonna hold you. I'm gonna have to like, if if I was to ever have to find a strategy on him, I would have to dig in the crates. <laughs> I would have to go deep. Hey, D Mike, would really have to go deep for that because D Mike, yeah. Let me um, uh, let me ask you a question real quick, right? Uh huh. Okay. I want to move up to heavyweight. Who? Do you think that Tyson Fury's gloves was tampered with in a Deontay Wilder fight? Being as though you box pro, what do you think about that controversy? All right, listen. One thing about that: if it was tampered with. Then the commission will be fired. The commission will be sued in whatever state they fought in. Because at the end of the day, when you put your gloves in, your hands in your gloves, you got to get them signed off. That's what on a white tape. That's what the, that that is. They, they marker. It's, it's it's signed off, meaning okay, it's okay. You're good. Facts. Now, if even if I got to take it off and go to the bathroom and retape it, they got to sign it again. Right. You can't just put your gloves on and just go in the fucking ring. But I can tell you one thing. My last fight, you know, I fought in eight ounces. You know, they have eight ounces, uh, small or large. Yeah. My hands are big. So my last fight, they gave me eight ounce small. So, oh, my God, my hand, like, I mean, when I say my I couldn't even ball my hand up. I couldn't even ball my hand up in the glove. I put it all the way in, but my, my fingers was like squished in there like this. I couldn't even ball my hand up. My fingers were squished. So I was basically fighting with a, one hand. No hands, actually. Yeah. I would, like, one, man, but me personally, I don't I, 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 I don't think it was tampering with because how can it be? I mean, it's, he's a heavyweight. They fight in, I think, 10 or 12. 10. How can your hands... That big be maneuvered in there and your glove not like all the way on. Like I, I don't know. That's that's hard. That's hard to but yeah, the, the, the only thing fairy, I, I'm about to say some funny shit because you can go back was, yesterday a lot with the, um, I remember I was just I was when, gonna go ahead. Um, Steve Cunningham was about to fight Tyson. I remember if you okay. D Mike fought D Mike you fought on that card. Hey D Mike, you fought on that card. Yeah, yeah, I put on that card. Yeah, I remember I told I told brother Nazim, I told Steve Cunningham, I was like, yo, the dude is just a funny dude. He gonna get under yo, y'all skin on the pissed. press conference. What happened a week later? <laughs> Steve yo. was just like, no, you know, I'm cool, man. Brother Nazim, go, oh yeah, just let him talk. Got under everybody's skin. <laughs> yo, that dude, yo, Nazim was like, character. I got fear to fuck you up right now. <laughs> Yo, that dude is a character. When I say he's a character, he's a character. And the crazy thing about it is, for that camp, Steve training for that camp, you know, we did, I mean, we had to, like, not, Steve had, was hit, holding the, I mean, Nazim was holding the pass for Steve, but Nazim was up on the, on the ring, sliding across the ring while Steve was on the floor, hitting the bag. <laughs> <laughs> when he caught him with the overhand right, Steve actually, like, they worked on that so much during camp. So much. It's just that Steve did, executed the plan wonderfully. He was outside by, like, 60 pounds him, that fight. Him, you, can't, you, can't, you can't get your body physically prepared for dead weight. Yeah, that's what I say. He was outweighed by, like, but 60 pounds But he was just that wearing fight. him down, wearing him down. It was like, Steve, like, Steve is big muscle is strong, but he's not the type that that's that's unbelievably physically strong. You feel yeah, I get what you're he's saying. He's physically strong, but he's not one of them that's like physically strong to where though, oh, I can wrestle, I can pick this motherfucker up and you know what I mean Steve likes to move here, but Steve loved the fight. Like he liked the fight. This no jabs allowed fight. <laughs> That's what Nye had to get him out of. That's why one camp, Nye just had him using his left hand the whole camp. Like, you want to know? taller than these dudes. What the fuck are you doing? The story about Tyson Fury, right? That's not really out there. So back when Eddie was with main events, you know, main events hate the shit out of me.
So Tyson Ferry, this is back where Ed, after Eddie fought Adam at, you know, got hey, Johnny. Johnny. Yeah. Put a light on because just go on YouTube. Yeah, we can't see uh, it. We see it trying to <laughs> move this shit. <laughs> yeah, right, like uh, all right, so so Eddie so this is when Eddie changed his main events. I remember he got his bicep torn after he fought the Admac fight, he fought with one arm. Uh -huh. So Tyson Ferry and Peter they called main events to see if they could fight Eddie Chambers. You said Sam Peters? No, no, Peter, Peter Ferry, his uncle, oh, who oh, was training oh, him at the time. So they called they called main events to fight, but Eddie couldn't do it because he had a torn bicep. And at the time, he was like, yo, Tyson Ferry sloppy, he punching himself, hitting himself with an uppercut and shit like this. So Kevin Johnson took that fight. <laughs> I remember I, I remember I streamed it. I literally called Eddie like, yo, this motherfucker is fainting and fighting Southpaw and Orthodox at 6'9". I don't know where this shit coming from, but <laughs> I don't know what happened. Yo. So after that, Eddie, they got cool, but Eddie had to go, went over to camp. Steve Cunningham was in that camp. They went to Canada when, Dave, when Tyson Ferry was supposed to fight David Hay. Right. So, um... That fight fell through, but Eddie got right. a main events contract and went over them. And then Eddie called me at Canada and was like, yo, this motherfucker's going to beat Klitschko. So when it happens, laid down like $3,000 a bet and won that joint. Won 12 grand. You said 12? Yep, off of three, off of three stacks, won 12 grand. Wow. Damn. He was a 7-1 to one underdog. Yeah, I'm, I didn't even think he was going to win that fight at the time. But I didn't know too much about Fury, too. That's when I used to hate Fury. I still hate Fury. No, I, I like this person. I, 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 you can't I hate his personality. No, no, I, I don't like I think, I think maybe it's a uh, maybe it's an English thing, a London thing, or or European thing. Because when I was in Camp Ricky Hatton, oh, my God. When I say just a character, funny, like his whole family. I just, I mean, I still think he is a bit. But I just thought he was super corny. But after that first water fight, that's when I started to like him even more, but after what he just pulled when they say COVID, which I don't believe, uh -huh. but, yeah, he, he lost all respect for me after this. Who that? Uh, Fury. Yeah. He probably, I fuck with Fury, crazy man. About this, I like Malik Scott being Wilder's trainer. I do, too, but you know how it, it ain't is. No buts to me. Ain't no buts to me. At <laughs> I'm going to put it this way. We're going to bet like this. I love Malik Scott. I believe Malik Scott will be a great coach. I've been saying that. I believe he'll be a great coach because he knows everything the technical, the science about boxing. Right. But you think at 36 years old, he going once Wilder gets hit, he going to do them feints and all that shit, he going to go right back to what he used to. That's the note. That's the thing. One thing about what? You have to reinvent him. What, are you going to send him out there the same way? But he's, I got, you think at 36 years old, he's going to really be right? All his technical it, flaws, you think it's going to be, you're going to see a technical boxer in one fight. I asked, it depends I asked, on how much they're trying to teach him, too. I, at one point, at one point, we all go with what we know. At some point. I, I, asked, the same know. Question. But, I asked the same question because, I asked the same question because, like you said, at 36, and then... I never seen like I I see him hitting pads. I don't see him sparring to see if he could put that in effect. You learning? And so, not, so not, not taping the spars. Like, no, that's the thing. So, people might not be taping the spars. So what I what I think with that, I think one, it depends on how much and what exactly they train him for, and two. I don't think he's trying to change his soul style up. I just think he's giving him pointers inside is just for like Fury fight fat. alone. Because that's, that's all, like all that's on Wilder's mind like right new now new is Fury. He's not thinking about nothing else. You can offer him a billion dollars to something else, Yo, he'll fight Fury. He's under pressure, too. All the shit he's talking like niggas with the gloves and this. But he's under pressure. Deontay Wilder is just like equivalent to somebody buying a, a, a used car. You don't need a new engine, new transmission. Just tune that bitch up, change some shit on it. And put the fuck back on the road. Like, I, I don't, well, y'all, I don't think we're going to see a brand new Wilder, but I do think, I think we'll see a better version. Like, we'll see some the same I shit, but just see it better. The way he punched on the shit that he looked, that he doing in training, 
if he apply that shit, yo, I think Malik is teaching him how to be to box like a tall, like a tall man with, with skill. Six seven tall man with skill, and you, you can punch like the way he punched. He don't even gotta I, hit you. Yeah, I think Wilder goals. only got a punching chance. That's it, bro. He ain't gonna be able to box with Fury. No, uh, on uh, athletic, athletic wise, Fury is definitely a better fighter. Yeah, I think I think even Wilder knows that. Fury's a better fighter, but I think Malik Scott is showing him. I think Malik Scott is showing Wilder just enough boxing. So that he could get in there and land that big shot. Yes. What? Well, listen, you know when Deontay Wilder won me over? It was me and my uncle. We was in Vegas, right? And they was talking or whatever. So he was like, he was like, hey, brother, my son, listen. He said, you know why these dudes can't really deal with me? He said, I got to be perfect for two seconds. They got to be perfect for 12 rounds. Yeah, he said that a million times. Somewhere I was like. Damn. <laughs> I heard him, but I wasn't paying attention. So, uh, of course, uh, what, what you mean? He was like, man, he need two seconds. Who can box with who? That punch off. I was like, yo. I was that's, like, damn. That's that second. And he second believed fight. in it. He was like, yo, when I hit these dudes with this, I'm telling you, mm, they going to sleep. I don't even got to hit them all the way. They going to sleep. His second fight with Luis Ortiz proved that. But also, I think that, that kind of hurt him, too. You think so? You think you think kind of hurt him? You think it showed too much arrogance? Yeah. It's like, yeah, too much arrogance. Like, oh, I always got to punch you. So if he don't get him out of there. but That's yeah, not like, arrogance, but that's being real. He don't got no skill. That's being real. No, but it's I like, think that also hurt him, like, coming up. Like, all right, I don't need to get better. I got this it's, equalizer. It's like, it's, like when, it's like when you ask a fighter, are they going for the knockout? And most of the times they say, if it comes out, I'll, I'll, I'll get it. He doesn't have that master. He has that master. I know I'm going to get it. I mean, what he can say with the power he has, but it's not always going to work. Because you got to yeah. think about it. As much, I like I like Wilder as a person, man. It's, it was too much bullshit. First it was the suit, the gloves, yeah. the corner men. That's what, that's what I was like, honestly, I, I love Malik Scott. Malik Scott, to me, would be a great coach. Hey, Johnny. I could see him getting his ass up and making moves. Oh yeah, it was Malik, man. They fire him. I think hey, Johnny. This, I think the third fight would be closer to what the first fight was than the second fight. Even hey like, Johnny. I think, now I got I got a question for you, Johnny. What's next up for your man, Mikey Garcia? From what I'm hearing, he might end up fighting Regis. Regis. Wow, really? That's a good fight. That's, That's a real good fight. At this point, what I'm one hearing thing about me is like I look I look at the hey, Seb, what's up, Johnny? Johnny and Mikey Garcia is like best friends. I want to say oh. best, but that's my own. Hey, that's I think that's a good. If this was if this was Mikey, consistent Mikey at 140, like after he beat Lippiets, I would I would thank Mikey with no hesitation. Not saying I don't now, but now I think it's it's up in the air. A reason well, I can see where you come from. This is where I get with a lot of boxers, right? You know, Mikey, there's a lot of people when that boxing is a lifestyle. When a lot of people get a lot of money, you could yeah. say that they good for a lifetime, it's a job for them. Like they take long yeah. breaks, they go on long oh, vacations and stuff like that. It's been proven. So it's that's the only thing, but as styles wise, would I have him beat Enriquez? Probably. But I, if Mikey, if Mikey can go to one forty yeah. and he could be what he was when he fought Olympias, I don't think anybody in one forty can beat him. Hey, not to cut y'all off, y'all see the guy Riley or Thomas? You remember Riley? Thomas Riley? Anybody? John, you remember your Thomas Riley? You said Thomas Riley. Your Thomas Riley. I say Riley. Your Thomas. I see it. You do you remember yeah. him? I'm trying to think. Thomas Riley. Thomas Riley. Amateur one seventy eight. Southpaw, punch hard. Was he around you like oh oh four? Fact, Darcy. He actually he beat Bear in the finals of the gloves. All right, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about for sure. Solid fighter. <laughs> he was knocking oh. everything dead. What's up? You know who I like coming up though in the who heavyweight. That? I got to see him in person. The kid Jared Big Anderson. Baby. Big baby. Who? Hey. Big baby. Did you hear? It was rumors that one of the reasons Fury fight got postponed. Because allegedly, Anderson Pitt um, knocked him out on his feet 
I don't know if it's true not the mountain yeah. on his feet, but he did get kicked out of camp. Well, I know, for, for, well, I know the COVID shit is true. True, I heard like four of them um, got caught that shit. It's just, it's just, it's a bunch of BS with that story, which makes me think. Do I think he's sick? Sick? No, but you know how it is. A high risk when you taking that COVID shit. They going precaution. They can pre take a precaution. But I was saying yeah. when they said it happened. They had time to test them and quarantine them dudes. Yeah, and then, and then you had Bob Aram starting off saying everyone was fully vaccinated. Then that happens. They said he only took one shot. He was out partying, never like he was fully training. And and then they, mean, said, they said Joseph Park was one of the people who had it. Them shot, yeah, them shots don't mean nothing. Chris Paul got it after shots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, no, I'm not even just talking about COVID. I'm just saying everything – with the fury, everything with fury just just seems like it can always be a lie because he has a he has a history for because he's a character. He has a history for pulling out of fights when it's time to defend his title. He yeah. never defended his title actually. Yo, he that's true, yo. That is true. When he was supposed to fight Klitschko the first time, his ankle. Second time, mental problems were tired. And now this. I was about to say that. I was like, yo, didn't he retire and leave, and leave for a long time? They come back and lose, lose like 100, like 200 pounds or something like that? He retired yeah. for like a year or two to get out of that contract when he needed a rematch clause with Klitschko and then came back. But I heard they used to be on some shit like the workouts that Peter Ferry, because I remember Eddie told me. You would probably remember Dynamite when Eddie, in like two weeks, literally he got Eddie like 15 pounds of muscle. Damn. Yeah, I remember, yo. I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the, them, them workouts, that's why, them workouts, even Eddie, them work, I'm going to be honest with you. If Eddie probably would have stood over there, Eddie would have been a champion. But he just tired of that lifestyle. Man, I think Eddie should have went down to Cruiser or like other. You said what? If Eddie would have went to Cruiser, I think he would have tore shit up. Yeah, if he would have started that Cruiser, for sure. He just, even when I say tore shit up, he would have tore it because Nobody's as fast as Eddie. <laughs> no, listen, man. Eddie was faster than most 140 pounders, man. <laughs> he's actually a poor character. He's a scumbag. I'm talking that man. <laughs> Coach, sir. No, I actually respect Tyson as a person. Tyson really a cool person. No, who cool, did a lot of people don't know like Tyson yeah. Fury, Troy Mayweather. A lot of people in the media say, Oh, they assholes. Yeah, no, they're a good people. Yeah. Like, when I say they're good people, they're good people. Yeah. Like, Tyson Fury is, like, a genuine good person. Like, he just, like you said, he's a character. I mean, people got to realize, but I tell boxers, people starting to see it with these these YouTubers and all that shit. When mm -hmm. you a pro, boxing just 50% of the sport. They want that entertainment. Man, it's a yeah. lot of reasons. Listen, let me tell you one thing, right? It's fucked up, but. That's what I'm telling him about Keyshawn. Keyshawn Look, I'm going to show y'all something real quick, right? I'm gonna show y'all something real quick, right? Yeah. So, this is my arm, right? <laughs> it got yeah. this, this, this feel. You see the bottom where it got the Liberty Bell at right there? Yeah. That was supposed to have been Rocky. But I didn't put Rocky on there because I'm like, it, it would have been disrespectful to the boxing game to me because I don't. I, I agree with you. I get where you're coming from for sure. Yo, I listen. Like, again, like I said earlier, I said I got friends. I know people that died from boxing. I have people that uh, that's brain dead. I know people that's brain dead for boxing. People that, like, messed up real bad mentally from boxing. And y'all put Rocky in a boxing hall of fame next to Ali, and he's not a real person? Facts. Are y'all fucking... Not even Sylvester Stallone. Rocky. <laughs> like, Think about it. Y'all, listen, fuck all that... They talking about the YouTubers fucked up the game. No, no, they fucked up the game with putting that motherfucker in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. I understand that he influ he influenced. They put him in the Hall of Fame as an influencer, not a boxer. We know boxer for anybody in the Hall of Fame. No, you know what? He did influence. Man, he influenced a lot. What, of what's, fu what's fucked up is it took to Joe Frazier to pass to get a statue. That motherfucker Rocky statue been around for how long? Jeez. Man. People don't think that. But yeah, man. It's time for me to go to bed, y'all. I gotta get up early. You hey, know, appreciate you getting on. TV to the TV, watch me.
Appreciate Thanks you for having me. On. Oh, for sure. I need to hey, keep having me. Appreciate y'all, man. Can both of y'all can both hey, y'all give me a follow? Yo. Huh? Can both of y'all follow me? I got you. Yo, D my um I'm gonna I'm gonna send you my number to um in the DM. Oh man, I gotta hide you about something too. All right, for sure. I'm about to do that right now. All right, right peace out, everybody. I'm gonna hit you back right. at the film. All right. Good luck in your fight, too, man. I'm about to follow you. All right, appreciate it.